Hello everybody, my name is Rachel and welcome to my channel Kalanadi. Today I'm going to review Summerland by Hano Ryanyemi, which is his newest novel. This is out today or in a couple of days depending on which country you live in. I was sent a copy of this for a review by the publisher Tor, so thank you very much to them and as always my review is my honest opinion. Summerland is a supernatural fantasy novel set in an alternate history in 1938 in a world where the British discovered the afterlife around the First World War. Lucky people receive a ticket so that when they die, they pass over into the afterlife called Summerland and they stay there rather than fading away. And they can resume leading their lives and working their jobs, much like the living do. Britain has been expanding its empire into Summerland, building on top of a mysteriously abandoned old dead civilization that they discover there. And they are not alone. They are not the only power in Summerland. The Soviet Union is also in the afterlife and the British and the Russians have come into conflict in life and in death. The story begins when a defected Russian operative reveals the existence of a Soviet mole in the British Secret Intelligence Service to a British agent named Rachel White. The spy is a man named Peter Bloom, and no one believes Rachel when she claims he's a spy because he is protected by some of the most powerful men in Britain. When she insists a bit too far, she is demoted and her career is stalled. But fearing what will happen if he is not apprehended because Bloom is working in a very sensitive arena in the world where the next world war may kick off, she sets up an off-the-books operation to catch him in the act. The real difficulty for Rachel, of course, is that Peter Bloom is dead. He works in the Summer Court, which is the afterlife branch of the British SIS. So how do you catch a spy who's already dead, who's literally a ghost? I would sum up the premise of this book as Cold War spycraft meets the afterlife and Victorian spiritualism circa 1938. Ryan Yemi has really figured out the technology that allows people to die and pass over into Summerland and seamlessly continue living their lives, not just with the other dead, but also with the living. This means that in just a few decades, human society has been radically altered, and I think that people's attitudes towards life, when death is no longer to be feared, when death is sometimes almost preferable over remaining in the land of the living, is key to the story, sometimes in subtle ways. And it seemed to me that for a lot of characters in the story, life was just this thing to be gotten over with as quickly as possible, because death was the real objective, and that seems so very backwards, but it shows how reversed people's thinking about life and death has become um, when death is just another land that you go to live in. There are also some very intriguing questions raised about the afterlife itself in the story, like who were the old dead who built a civilization there before humans found it? Why did they abandon it? Where did they go? Um, why is the afterlife so empty? You know, billions upon billions of human beings have died, so why are there just a handful remaining? Some of them really no more than a century or two old in the afterlife. Why isn't there any evidence of other alien dead as well. And the little bits raised about um, afterlife archaeology were really interesting to me. I would have liked a lot more about that. Despite these fantastic ideas, despite how much I enjoyed the plot and the premise of this book, I did think that it felt too thin. There wasn't enough explanation of the discovery of the afterlife. There wasn't enough backstory, basically. Now, one of the things that I loved about Ryan Yemi's previous books, uh, the Jean Leflambeur series, is that he doesn't explain anything in those books. The reader has to figure out the world building, the concepts, and what is going on from context only. It's difficult but incredibly rewarding, and it worked in things like The Quantum Thief because all of those clues were actually there. So I, I wondered if the same thing was happening in Summerland, but when I got done with it, I thought, no, not really. I don't think that there actually was enough context, there weren't enough clues, there wasn't enough depth actually built into the book. So I enjoyed the secret agents, the hunt, the spycraft, 
the afterlife premise and wondering how ectophones worked, but I never really grasped when and how this state of events had come about. And as an analytical and logical reader who really wants to know how things happened, why they happened, how they are consistent and logical and everything, that really bothered me. The other slight weakness of this book, in my opinion, is that it lacks suspense, especially if you're judging it as a spy novel, which I was, because I think that was kind of the gist of the story. And that lack of suspense comes from the fact that you already know the identity of the Soviet mole from the very beginning. This isn't a hunt to figure out who the mole is. You already know who he is, you know where he is, you know what he's doing, you know that he is actually a spy, and you see it from his perspective, the story is gathering enough evidence to convince the SIS old boys that he is actually a threat, which is not nearly as suspenseful in my opinion. I think that would be disappointing if you kind of read this like I did, along with the tagline, how do you catch a spy who's already dead? That seems to be very suspenseful. But I think that's really a story about motivations, about what makes people choose or change their loyalties in a world like this where life and death have been so radically redefined and when your actions in life do not get erased at all when you go into death and when people in death can have really extreme consequences for the living world as well. So. Reading this for me, the really interesting storyline was actually how Peter Bloom became a Soviet spy. Why would he do that? <laughs> That's what I was really reading for. Based on that, I would say that this book's appeal is probably more um, how much you are interested in the characters' motivations in a spy novel like this, or how drawn you are to the premise with the Cold War spy tactics in the afterlife. The real hints that something darker, more troubling, more terrifying is happening are left until the very end, and those darker aspects are what I thought the entire book was going to be about, and that really isn't the case. So that is Summerland by Hanno Rayaniemi. I would definitely recommend this if you enjoy things like Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy or spiritualistic medium technology. In the end, I was a little bit disappointed that it didn't have the depth or the darkness that I had expected from it, um, from the original synopsis of the book, but it turned out to be surprisingly light, very entertaining, and fast to read, and I really enjoyed it. And that is it for my review of Summerland. Let me know if you have read this and what your thoughts are on it. Thank you very much for watching, and I will talk to you again soon, and until then, bye.